Assalamu alaikum everybody. I was debating on whether or not to continue to make YouTube videos because the main reason was I didn't want anybody really in my business and you know what I mean like if coworkers were to find my YouTube video um, like I just didn't want them looking at my stuff I, I don't know and then like reverting to Islam I it just felt like nobody would want to watch my videos a lot of people have been um, you know very curious they have questions which is fine but I just sometimes you just want to keep your life a little bit private I didn't think that anybody would still find my videos beneficial I didn't think if people would continue to watch them so there was just a lot of um, doubt about continuing to make my videos um, I'm very I'm very very sad it was a very hard decision to like delete um, my old videos they were super helpful they got a lot of views and I always told myself like even if I'm just helping five people five nursing students versus 500 nursing students like as long as I was helping somebody um, get through nursing school like that's all that mattered and then another contribution to being afflicted on making more videos was I am already out of nursing school so I don't know like how much help I could be for another nursing student especially since there's much more content out there on nursing school um, much more fresher videos on orientation and like the first week of school all that stuff my videos I took them down and I remade the last video kind of like recapping everything um, and then the most important um, like tips and tricks that got me through the beginning of nursing school um, so hopefully inshallah everybody will still find benefits and still enjoy watching my videos um, I guess I can continue to relate nursing school to nursing I am still in my very first year of nursing I was off orientation January 1st um, orientation for me was 13 weeks at my hospital I stayed at the same hospital that I worked in through the beginning of nursing school or excuse me towards the end of nursing school I was a nurse tech and I was able to get a job um, in intensive care once I graduated um, I do have to say if you are if you are fixed on a certain unit a certain position a certain specialty and you've already gotten experience in nursing school luckily um, I got in experience like I was in the newborn intensive care unit um, I did get a few hours there so I knew that I definitely wanted to be a NICU nurse however they weren't hiring at the hospital that um, I was applying at so I just applied to every single intensive care unit that was hiring and I got vascular intensive care now I will tell you this being a new grad in intensive care like they're gonna train you if you want to do intensive care straight out of nursing school you just have to study a little bit you know topics that obviously they didn't cover in nursing school which is everything whether you're med surge ICU whatever pediatrics um, you're gonna have to teach yourself whatever specialty you decide but if you are fixed on a certain specialty go for it straight after nursing school because you don't know when there's going to be another opportunity again and you know if you love something just go for it there's no reason why you should be listening to the next nurse or the older nurse or the younger nurse telling you not to go for something that you love um if you have experience if you tried it out or if you want to try it out 100 percent, you know what it is go for it because i didn't really know what vascular was i didn't know what was the difference between cardiothoracic um, coronary artery vascular intensive care I didn't know the difference between those units so I just accepted whatever was the first person that called me back um, which isn't such a bad thing however I don't feel happy in where I'm at um, I see a lot of cool things I have great patients but the reason I wanted to do intensive care unit was because I wanted to feel like I was making a difference and with the type of patients that I have I don't feel like I'm making a difference um, you know I maybe make one out of ten patients day that I know of I could be making three out of ten patients day um, but to me I just feel like it's I, I'm not really making a difference and that's why I'm very unhappy in where I'm at and I just hope that new grads um, can learn from my mistake so um, enough with the tips and everything um, I want to talk about my week how how are my weeks going in nursing 
So I usually like to work my three in a row. You are only required to work 36 hours when you are a nurse, as far as I'm concerned with the hospitals that I've looked into. So I do like to work three in a row, three twelves. Of course, when you clock in and you clock out, it's not exactly on the dot. 12 hours, you know, you do go over. On my very first day, I do get the most sleep. Everybody is different. Everybody's sleep schedule is different. I work night shift, so um, usually if the week following my three in a row, I try to go back to a day shift schedule. Um, so I like to sleep um, during the day, and then I like to stay up during the night when it's my very first shift out of three. So I like to go back and switch to um, night shift schedule before um, my first out of three shifts. That way I can sleep during the day before my shift. So today, um, today, this week was a little bit different. I did sleep last night, so I kind of got broken sleep during the day. Um, I did wake up around like 1.30 period point blank like for the day. I did a little bit of grocery shopping and I meal prepped for the like for the three days um, for my shifts. I like to meal prep and get that done out of the way. That way I'm not scrambling to find something to eat before I leave for work. Um, I did not film any of my like grocery shopping, but I'm probably gonna like pick up a few things just so that I have content or something interesting and cute and aesthetic to show you guys. Um, so I like to prepare my meals for the first three days. Uh, yes, you are prone to eating and snacking um, more during night shift. It's not that it's less busy, but there are less family members, visitors, there's less doctors. Um, so you are kind of like you and your patient and then like the nursing staff. So there's a lot more snacking going on at nighttime. But of course, it still is very busy. Um, so those are my meals. Um, I like to sometimes if I am like writing a little bit late, um, like on day two or day three, you know, later, because on day one, I'm pretty early. I like to have like a pre-made um, report sheet and I make my own. So for report sheets, it does take a very long time for you to get the gist of what you have to write down in report, what is giving report and what is receiving report, what is the most pertinent information. Some people, when you go in to give report, they just want the systems of the patient, like, you know, neuro, respiratory, cardiac, how it pertains to the patient, you know, what's going on with them. And then of course they kind of want the plan of care. <laughs> Otherwise they can kind of figure it out themselves. Um, so I like to write past medical history under their name, um, allergies and their code. Um, I like to write their admitting diagnosis. What did they originally come here for? What surgeries do they have? Did they have, or are they going to have? Um, because I am on a surgical unit. After that information, I like to write what's the plan of care. Even though I'm night shift, I like to know what's going on because if, let's say we are trying to get this patient off of a drip, if their blood pressure is doing super well at nighttime, I could turn off that blood pressure drip um, and then we could just, you know, have them either sent to the floor in the morning during the day or discharged uh, during the day. Um, so I like to complete and like check box their plan of care even at nighttime. On the top, I like to write the room number because when you are talking to doctors, they usually go by room numbers and not not by like first name, last name, unless you're getting an order or like towards the end. Um, and then, I get super shy when I'm filming. <laughs> okay, um, and then right, up, up, uh, right under the room number, um, I like to write what teams they have. So on my unit, we are not like closed unit. So sometimes we have like a team that is known on our unit or a team that is known on a completely different side of the hospital because it's a teaching hospital and it's massive. Um, so then I write their systems, neuro, respiratory, cardiac. Um, neuro being, are they alert and oriented times one, two, three, four? Are they standby assist? Are they on bed rest? Um, neurovascular assessment because we are a vascular unit. So how are their pulses? How is their circulation? Respiratory wise, are they intubated? Are they on room air? Are they on a nasal cannula? What is their oxygen goal? Um, cardiac, GIGU, skin. How is their skin? Do they have any wounds? Lines, what's my access? Do I have a central line? Do I have an A line? Do I have peripheral IVs? Drains, do they have a chest tube? Do they have a Foley? Do they have a wound vac? Drips, are they on a cardiac drip? Are they on sedation? Labs, what was the most pertinent labs and were they replaced? Um, and then pain medication. Um, oh, 
have have you been giving them pain medication have they been tolerating it so sometimes i like to have that um filled out before in case like i'm running late um the reason i had that filled out was because i had a little bit of downtime in my shift the last shift right now it's about 6 34 p.m 18 34. i usually like to clock in between like uh, around 6 30. um that way i can look up my patient a little bit write down information and then get report in a timely you know timely manner because i know day shift wants to leave and then some people that you are giving report to they like to do the same they like to just um you know give you a report as soon as you come in vice versa they like to get report as soon as you come in that way you can go home um i will take some clips i don't know what i can show you it's it's a lot of charting so i can't really show charting um once you get report you do a safety check you go into your patient's room with the leaving nurse you make sure that the pump is set correctly if you have any weight-based medication make sure that the pump is set correctly to the right patient's weight or the medication um the right race rate dose make sure that the right medication is hanging um and then check on your patient ask them basic questions so with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and get reports um and check on my patients and see what assignment I have. All right, it is shift two of three. Last night I had pretty stable patients and I got out at a pretty reasonable time, but because I had to do something after my shift, um, I ended up getting home kind of late and I got out about five hours of broken sleep. I'm a very light sleeper so it wasn't the greatest inshallah i'll get more sleep tomorrow after this shift tonight um usually they'll give you like the same assignment um or the same rooms of course if a patient like transfers out or you get a new patient in like they can't really control that but hopefully i get my same assignment um and have another good night so i remember like in nursing school and like orientation um and then even like kind of when i was on my own i think the one of the, like the most nerve-wracking things for me was going into the patient's room and meeting them for the first time because i didn't know like if they were gonna like me like what their personality was so that was definitely an obstacle to overcome also uh physical assessment i've said this so many times in my like other videos my older videos physical assessment in nursing school um, was a skills check off and ours wasn't a full head to toe assessment like you normally would get checked off for ours was a focused assessment so for a first semester nursing student grasping the concept of a focused assessment was very difficult for me and they did not want to pass me at all me and another um, student classmate at the time like we were the last day of the semester trying to pass the physical assessment uh, check off um, now, looking back on it, I can do a focused assessment for respiratory or any other system, you know, but a first semester or sometimes even maybe a second semester nursing student, you can't just grasp these assessment questions or, you know, skills just out of the air. Um, but now, thankfully, I can figure out what's a normal assessment finding and what's an abnormal assessment finding. Um, and then really, like, what is being a nurse is just doing your assessment at the beginning of the shift consistently doing it checking on your patients and if something you know is abnormal or a change you notify the doctor so that's really what the gist of nursing is um and then of course like med pass and then like plan of care as well like what's the goal of getting them home so that's a little bit of you know like the role of a nurse um going back to like really um just loving your job loving your specialty when you obviously you've heard this before when you love what you do it's never a day of work so um you know just making sure that you're taking care of yourself and that you're happy where you work and where you are and that they're taking care of you um so when you're looking for i did a video of like how to pick a nursing school well when you're looking for a job when you're looking for what hospital to work for or what company it's really important to look at the benefits that they offer um you know long term and short term you know do you have to be full time in order to uh like qualify for benefits or do you qualify for benefits part time 
Um, another thing you want to look for is like how is the scheduling? Like do you have to work like a certain amount of weekends? How are the holidays? Like how do you schedule the unit, um, you know, for holidays? And then just like um, scheduling benefits. Um, if you want to work night shift or day shift, what's the differential for night shift? What's the differential for weekends? Um, you know, of course, like pay. And these are questions like I'm sure any hospital is willing to ask or to answer. Um, it's just very important that you remember to ask these kinds of questions. Um, but benefits, I think, is very important because, you know, you are working in a pretty strenuous, strenuous um, field. Nursing is not easy on the body, whether you're working with pediatrics or geriatrics or bariatrics, it's not, it's not easy. Um, it's, it takes a toll on the body, so making sure that you have a really good insurance, um, it, it is very important. And then hospitals differ, so one hospital's insurance might be different from the next hospital's, and then within your hospital or clinic or wherever you decide to work, they have different plans, different options. So make sure you um, look very carefully at that. Um, I have like no plans on this video. I'm just trying to like fill it with tips, experience, um, just my, you know, new grad nursing journey. I am in residency. It does finish in finish in July. We meet once a month and we are doing a project, um, kind of like a research project. And, you know, I will have like a little mini graduation ceremony in July. And then I did touch up with, um, you know, I am on my BSN, so I did touch on that in the last video. Um, and then hopefully, you know, once I finish my bachelor's, give myself a little break, I will work on my master's because we all know that if you want more money, you work less hours, you got to keep getting that degree. So, uh, I think that's it. I'm going to start heading in and see if I have the same assignment. It's 8.30 a.m. and I anticipated giving report um, a little bit sooner than I did. I anticipated finishing faster, but it didn't happen. Um, I did have one unstable patient and then I had another patient who was stable but was a direct admin, so it was a much longer process to get that patient settled while my other patient was unstable. So it was a hot mess. I usually don't take stuff home with me, but I got emotional when I got to the car. I'm so tired. Um, and I'm gonna go upstairs and get some sleep. <laughs>
have like 45 minutes on the phone um, on FaceTime with my mom and I made myself something to eat literally the same thing as yesterday I put tomatoes onions potatoes and put it all in a pan and then once everything was like cooked I put two eggs on top and then I just ate it it was really good lately I've been super hungry before I go into work um I try to leave everything like picked up before I leave so I'm just finishing that up I made my lunch and I was talking to my mom about my night last night I think like just reflecting on how like busy you are despite how flustered you get especially being a new grad nurse just acknowledging the fact that you you know you conquered it you got it done you took care of your patients the way you were supposed to that's like super important so just like give yourself credit don't be too hard on yourself um oh i got floated for the very first time i think it was last week like the very first day that i was able to get floated on my unit they floated me um so i know pre either in like this video or a previous video i talked about how there's so many different kinds of cardiac units we have cardiothoracic cardiovascular um and then coronary art like it's just a lot so i got floated to um the cardiothoracic intensive care unit for my very first float and it was very intense i mean like i haven't seen um you know all the things that they had like my patients had that night we don't have like those kinds of patients um and like the labs that i had to draw um endo tool so like i don't know if anybody watching is familiar with endo tool or if you're like looking into nursing or just watching other nursing uh nursing videos but like that was my very first patient with the endo tool so it was it was definitely a lot but luckily i had a charge nurse that was hands-on she was super helpful she said i did really good so um yeah just make sure that you give yourself enough credit at the end of the day at the end of the shift um, and then make sure you're taking care of yourself invest in really good shoes um, because like my body has been aching I got like these Amazon sneakers because it was just like super fast and easy um, and they're super painful at the end of the shift the only reason I wore them the last two shifts is because my on clouds I stepped in normal saline they started to get squeaky and um, I washed them and like they're still squeaking so I don't know how to like make it go away I heard like putting baby powder on the bottom like works but I haven't done that so just make sure you invest in very good sneakers um, I noticed that like I tried one pair of on clouds and like the very first night it was so painful I had to change it for a different kind so i could definitely put like the description down here to give recommendations but everybody's different you just have to try whatever works for you and yeah night three of three after work i plan on going straight to my parents house hang out with my family um i usually don't pull 24 hour days after like my shift um because i normally do but lately i haven't um and lately i've been very tired like the last week so we'll see how that goes i might take a nap but i brought extra clothes and i'm gonna bring my laptop with me that way as soon as i'm done with work i can go straight over there and yeah it's off to work three three let's go i forgot to say i didn't get too much sleep today normally I don't have a problem like falling asleep so I get home, shower, go straight to bed, and then I'm a light sleeper after like three or four hours. So I probably got like 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. I think I got like maybe four hours of sleep again today. So, <sighs> yeah. Night shift isn't easy. Um, I know like one of the older co workers that I work with. He gets like seven to eight hours of sleep. I don't know how he does it. He's a professional at this point. Um, I had to go down to my apartment complex office 
um, so like when I was talking to her, she suggested like, you know, do, doing um, incense and like candles, diffuser, but it's like staying asleep is the problem. So I need like a soundproof room. So if anybody else has a struggle with night shift, I used to not have a problem when I, when I was a tech, but lately I feel like it's been getting harder and harder. It's been two years, almost two years doing night shift. So if anybody has any suggestions on how to stay asleep, please let me know. I have to do an apartment tour. But anyways, today is Monday. And yesterday after work in the morning, I went straight to my mom's house. I spent some time with my family. I did take a nap. I was super tired, so I slept between... Um, I think I fell asleep at like 10 and then I woke up around 2 in the afternoon. We spent a little bit of time together um, and then I left around like 6 in the evening because I was super tired. I came here, I came home and I did like a Sunday reset. I cleaned um, and then I fell asleep around like 11 o'clock so I got pretty decent sleep. I went to sleep early. Um, woke up and I woke up around like 2 in the afternoon. I went with a friend to grab some groceries at a couple grocery stores and then um, I came here to meal prep because I work um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so tomorrow night and then like the next two nights after that. Um, so I did season, so I'm going to put my phone here, I did season. I did like meal prep, you can't see, but like I am marinating some chicken so that I can make it tomorrow. Marinating chicken, and then yeah, I made dinner. I'm having a friend over, and um, I'm probably gonna have to stay up as late as I can tonight. That way, I can sleep tomorrow during the day before my shift. Um, I am working on my bachelor's degree, and even though I'm on spring break, my two classes are already open, so I have access to the modules. So I'm going to get some schoolwork done tonight. But yeah, thanks for watching.